Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're diving deep into one of the fundamental networking tools, the ping command. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced user, understanding how to use ping can be incredibly valuable. So, let's get started. Before we jump into examples, let's quickly go over what ping is. Ping is a command line tool used to test the reachability of a host on an internet protocol IP network. It also measures the round-trip time for messages sent from the originating host to a destination computer. Essentially, it's like sending a signal to see if a device is responsive and how long it takes for that signal to return. Now, let's look at the basic syntax of the ping command. It's simple, type ping then the host name or IP address. You can use either a domain name or an IP address as the target. I'll run pinggoogle.com to test the connectivity to Google's servers. As you can see, we get responses with round-trip time statistics. This basic command is handy for a quick check on network connectivity. The results of a basic ping command include several key pieces of information that provide insights into the network connectivity and performance. Let's break down the typical results. The number of packets sent. This is the number of ICMP echo request packets sent to the destination. By default, the ping command on most systems sends four ICMP Internet Control Message Protocol echo request packets to the specified destination. Each packet is sent separately, and the command waits for the corresponding echo reply from the destination for each packet. The default values for the number of bytes and time to live TTL in a ping command can vary slightly depending on the operating system. However, in many cases, the default size of the ICMP echo request packet is often 32 bytes on many systems. The default time to live TTL value represents the maximum number of hops routers or devices a packet can traverse before being discarded. The default TTL value is often set to 128 or 64, depending on the operating system. In our case it shows 55. In this example, you can see that four packets were sent and only three were received and one was lost. Packet loss occurs when not all sent packets are received. The percentage of packet loss is calculated based on the number of packets sent and the number of packets received. The round-trip time statistics are also provided. Round-trip time RTT means time it took for a packet to travel from the source to the destination and back. IPv4 and IPv6 are two different versions of the Internet Protocol. A use of 4 in the ping command is especially relevant in environments where both IPv4 and IPv6 are supported, and the user wants to ensure that only IPv4 is used for the ping test. If you don't specify 4 or 6 in the ping command, some systems will try to use IPv6 by default. By using 4, you are explicitly instructing the command to use IPv4. This command is a way to display the help or usage information for the ping command. It provides a summary of the various options and syntax that you can use. It's a quick reference to help users understand how to use the command with its different parameters. For example, the ping command with these parameters will send five ICMP echo request messages to the specified destination instead of the default four. The size of the ICMP echo request packet's payload size is 1000 bytes instead of 32 the default. This ping command is used to perform a reverse DNS lookup for the specified IP address. The option is used to resolve the specified IP address to its corresponding host name, if available. Keep in mind that the success of the reverse DNS lookup depends on the configuration of the DNS server and whether it has a corresponding PTR pointer record for the given IP address. If there is no PTR record or the DNS server is not configured to provide reverse lookup information, you may not see a host name in the output. When you run the ping 127.001 command, you are pinging the loopback address, which is a special address used to test network connectivity on the local machine. Pinging the loopback address is often used as a simple test to ensure that the TCP IP stack on a computer is functioning correctly. If the loopback ping fails, it may indicate an issue with the network stack or the network adapter on the local machine. If you want to keep pinging the target continuously until manually stopped, Use the T option, press Ctrl C to cancel the ping, and there you have it, a detailed exploration of the ping command with practical examples. Whether you're troubleshooting network issues or just curious about the responsiveness of a server, ping is a powerful tool to have in your networking toolkit. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tech tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.